In this short video, we'll talk about errors. As you know, statistics is not about cold hard truth. It is often about approximation. All we have is evidence against the null hypothesis. We don't know whether the null hypothesis is true or not. So in this way, you always ought to stay humble. Um, we might have solid evidence against the null hypothesis, but we could still reject it on false grounds. You also know about our confidence interval. In our last example, we've used a 95% confidence interval. You could also use a 99% confidence interval. As you're gaining confidence by widening the confidence interval, you're also losing precision and vice versa. By choosing the confidence interval, it is always a trade-off between security and precision. In the social sciences, the 95% confidence interval became the standard boundary. Now also think about other um, consequences by choosing your confidence interval. In statistics, we are separating between so-called type 1 errors, so type 1 errors, and type 2 errors. Okay, now what does that mean? If you're committing a type 1 error, you're falsely rejecting, so you would, if you're committing a type 1 error, you would reject the null hypothesis of, so you reject the null hypothesis of no difference, for example, while in fact the null was true. So let's take our exam, our French family, a French and immigrant family example from the last video. So in, in this video, we said, okay, uh, was there a difference between the numbers of kids per families between French and immigrant families in Paris? Is there a difference? Um, so in our example, we said that there was no difference. If we would commit a one, type one error, we would say, okay, there was a difference between the number of kids between, on average, between the number of kids in French families and immigrant families in Paris of 1970. If we would commit a type one error, we would say that while in fact the null was true, while there was actually no difference um, between the number of kids between French and immigrant families in Paris of 1970. So the same goes for the type two error. Um, if you're committing a type 2 error, you're failing to reject. So if you're committing a type 2 error, you fail to reject. So you assume that there is no difference. Um, so you fail to reject the null hypothesis. While in fact, the alternative was true. So this could, would be... Um, you say, okay, there was no difference between the number of kids between French and immigrant families in Paris of 1970 while in fact there was a real difference. Um, so in this case you would commit a type 2 error. A great way to remember this is this little picture right here. So uh, right here. Um, the doctor is testing for pregnancy. The null hypothesis would be the person is not pregnant. So the alternative hypothesis would be the person is pregnant. So you, you're either one of those. So you're either pregnant or you're not. Um, so in the first picture, the doctor is falsely rejecting the null hypothesis of no pregnancy. So he says, okay, the person is not not pregnant, so to say, while in fact it was true. It is, Of course it is true. This is a man. A man cannot uh, get pregnant. So he's committing a type 1 error. He's rejecting the null hypothesis of no pregnancy and therefore he's accepting the alternative hypothesis of pregnancy. And this is obviously false. Um, so, let's take a look at the second picture. Um, in the second picture, the doctor is ac accepting the null hypothesis of no pregnancy, while the alternative is in fact true. As you can see, the lady is obviously pregnant, but the doctor is committing a type 2 error by not rejecting the, uh, by, uh, by not rejecting the null hypothesis, while in fact the alternative hypothesis is true. So this is a great way to uh, remember what a type 1 error and what a type 2 error actually is.